Hello students, I welcome you all to the second lecture on bio, uh, biostatistics. In the earlier lecture, we discussed about the introduction to biostatistics, what is biostatistics, what are the terms we will come across when we discuss uh, the unit on biostatistics. Today's lecture, it is the second lecture and it will be on population, sample and sampling types. So here we will study what do you mean, what do we mean by the population, what is a sample and what are the different methods we use for sampling. So first, let's make the distinction between what is population and what is sample. So population, as we have already discussed in lecture one, it is the entire the totality or aggregate of all individual of all individuals within a specific characteristic is population. For example, we want to study something related to District Srinagar. So, District Srinagar, the population of whole District Srinagar will be our population. In the same way, if we want to study uh, a particular the incidence of a particular disease or efficacy of a certain vaccine or a drug uses of a, a drug in JNK, then whole JNK will be our population. And sometimes we use universe for the population. Now, what is the sample? <coughs> sample is a group of individuals chosen from that population is a sample. Now, it is not possible that we will study the whole uh, population, whole uh, population of JNK, whole population of our country, or whole population of the district. What we do, we select only specific individuals which, uh, uh, of whom we study the effect of the drug incidence of the disease or any other thing we want to study. That, uh, that those selected individuals, which are a subset of this population will be known as the sample. So choosing a sample from a population is known as sampling. So if we have the population here, I have shown 12 individuals. Now we randomly choose four individuals. So these four individuals is going, will going to shoot our sample. This will be the whole population or the universe. And the process of selecting these four individuals is known as sampling. Now what is sampling unit? The limited number of the population selected for sampling is called sampling unit. So how many individuals we have chosen in our sample? So that will be sampling unit, or it is simply the frequency of the sample is called the sample size. For example, in the, uh, here we have chosen four individuals for our, as our sample. So four will be the sampling unit, and the sample size will be four, since we have chosen four individuals as our sample. So this, this is the population. So how many individuals we have chosen is the sample. How many individuals we, ha we have there is the sample size. So what is the purpose of sample? If we want to study the whole population, so it is not possible to study the whole population, which will take a lot of time, a lot of resources will be used, manpower will be used. So uh, we study samples. So the basic purpose of sampling is to draw inference about the population. So whatever trait we study of this, that sample gives us inference of that whole population. Uh, we want to know the characteristics of the universe or the population by examining a small part of it. So we study a small part of the population which we know as a sample and we draw inference about the whole population. So that is the purpose of sampling. Now, <laughs> how do we do this process of sampling? First, we, uh, first is the selecting the sample. So we randomly select the sample then we collect the information, we collect the data from these sample, then we make inference about the whole population. So data or the information collected from the sample, on the basis of this, we'll make the whole inference about the whole population. So there are some essentials of the sampling. So it should be representativeness should be there. So representativeness means a selected sample should be homogeneous and not have much difference with the population. For example, now we are trying to study the, for example, age. Now, <coughs> average age. Now we don't have to select only the uh, younger ones. We don't have to select only the older ones. If we want to get the correct average age, we have to select each 
individual. It should include both young, old, middle-aged, then we can come across the um, average age. So it should be, there should be representativeness of the samples. Then we have to select the adequate sample. We, uh, for example, we want to study millions of population and our sample size will be of few hundred. May, uh, maybe not. We will get the accurate figures, accurate inference of the population. So our sample size, it has to be adequate. Then there should be independence. The sample should be selected independently and each individual from the population should have the same chance of being selected at the as sample. That any of the individual has a chance, has equal chance to be selected at the, as a sample. There should be no bias in the sampling. Then last, there should be homogeneity. That is, items in the sample should have similar characteristics. They should not differ widely, uh, for, uh, widely in their characteristics. There should be some homogeneity. Then methods of sampling, they can be divided into two. We have non-random sampling and the random sampling. First, we will discuss random sampling. <clears throat> so what is random sampling? It is also referred to as probability sampling. That is, each individual has the same probability of being selected as the sample. As every member of the population has a chance of being selected as a sample. And if we want to produce the result which are representative of the whole population probability sampling is the best method to be used. If we want to draw inference about the population of certain character, then probability sampling is the best method. Then there are different types of random sampling. Broadly, it is divided into four different methods. We have simple random sampling, then we have systemic, systemic sampling, then stratified sample, and then the cluster sample. We will discuss each. First, let us take up simple random sampling. <clears throat> so in this type of sampling, in a simple random sample, every member of the population has an equal chance of being selected. Since this is under random sampling, sampling, so each individual has equal chance of being selected as a sample. And sampling frame includes the whole population. And we can select sample from whole population. <coughs> For example, here we have, uh, if this represents the whole population, and the circled ones represents our sample. We can choose any of these individuals. Any of these individuals has the same chance of being selected as the sample. So this is simple random sampling. I can choose this, I can choose this, or I can choose this person as my sample. So this will be simple random sampling. <clears throat> then example of simple random sampling will be, for example, we have a company which has got 1,000 employees, and we just want to randomly select 100 employees. So, so starting, you know, if we have the database of the employees, we can start from one to thousand and any employee, uh, we will start from one, 10, 11, 15, 16, till we get 100 as our sample size. And they will be the simple random samples for, for us. <clears throat> then second is systemic sampling. In systemic sampling, it is similar to simple random sampling, but it is usually easier to conduct. So what, how is it? Every member of this population is listed with a number, but instead of randomly generating num numbers, individuals are chosen at regular intervals. For example, now I have a, th a thousand employees. I select first, I select fifth, I select 10th, I select 15th, I select 20th. So what I am doing, I'm not randomly selecting, but I am, um, <coughs> I am choosing individuals at regular intervals. For example, here I have exa given the example that I am selecting every fifth individual as my sample. First, fifth, tenth, fifteenth, and so on. So this type of sampling, it will be known as systemic sampling. The example is here. For example, uh, this entire corner shoots my population or the universe. Now I have chosen second, then, uh, if this is my first, second, third, uh, second, uh, for, I start from here, second, I have chosen this, I then I have left two, then I have chosen again third, 
then again i have left two i have chosen again third then again i will leave two then again i will choose this third one as my sample so when you choose every nth integral to be a part of the sample for example here in this example we have discussed every third person to be in the sample this type of sampling will be known as a systemic sampling Example of system sampling, for example, all employees of a company are listed in alphabetical order. Now we randomly select a starting point, say number six, and from six onwards, every tenth person is my sample. Six, then 16, 26, 36, and so on, till I get 100 people. So this will be example of system sampling. Then third one is stratified sampling. <clears throat> so in a stratified sampling, what we do, we divide the population into subgroups, which are known as strata, hence the name stratified sampling, based on a relevant characteristic. For example, gender. We, do, we have now 1,000 employees in a company. For example, 200 are male, females and 800 are males. Now I will divide them into strata, uh, male and the female or I can divide them in the age range. For example, how many are from 30 to 40 age group, then 40 to 50 age group, or income bracket I can divide, or the job role. For example, how many are invo involved with R&D, how many are involved with teaching, how many are involved with the public relations. So I will divide them into different strata and then take the samples. So it allows us to draw more precise conclusions by ensuring that every subgroup is properly represented in the sample. For example, in uh, I have 1,000 as my, uh, sam as my uh, population, 1,000 individuals working in a, uh, uh, in a company. Now only there are only 200 females and 800 males. Now when I divide them into strata, now there I can draw the precise conclusions by ensuring that every subgroup is properly represented. Now, if I want to take the sample from the uh, females, I will take those samples from 200. If I want to take uh, the samples from the males, I will select my sample from the 800 individuals. So this is my population. I have divided them on a similar character, for example, for example, age group or height or males and the females into strata. And then from these strata, I randomly select the samples. <coughs> samples. So this is the example of stratified sampling. <clears throat> example I have discussed, for example, in a company has 800 female employees and 200 employees constituting a total of 1,000 employees. Now we want to ensure that the sample reflects the gender balance of the company. So we sort population into two strata based on gender. Then from these strata, 80 women and 20 men are chosen, which gives me the sample size of 100. Now, if I study any character, it will be representative of that strata. Then fourth one is the cluster sampling. So cluster sampling, it also divides the population into subgroups, but each subgroup should have similar characteristics to the whole sample. In a start of sampling individuals from uh, each subgroup, you, we randomly select entire subgroup. Now here subgroups are made, but what we do, we select the entire subgroup as our sample. This method, it is good for dealing with large and dispersed population, but there may be some risk of error in the sample. It is usually employed when our, uh, this universe, it is very large. <coughs> the example is, now we have divided this entire population into different uh, clusters and each cluster can be chosen as a sample. Like here, we have the clusters, one, two, three, four, five, six clusters we have. Now we randomly chose this cluster and this cluster as a sample. So our sample constitutes two clusters. This is used when population size is very huge, but there should be some similarity between the clusters. This uh, example of cluster sampling is, for example, a company has office in 10 cities across the country. So all with, we say roughly they have the same number of uh, employees in similar roles. We do not have capacity to travel to every office to collect our data. So what we do, we randomly select three of and these will form our clusters. Now we form the cluster of three offices and um, each cluster will behave as a sample. 
Then the second type of sampling is non-probability sampling. So what is the definition? Non-probability sampling is defined as a sampling technique in which the researcher selects samples based on subjective judgment. So there is some bias or the judgment of the researcher rather than the random selection. The, the, the selection is not random, but it is based on some judgment with some goal in the mind. It is less stringent and it is opposite to probability sampling. And the sampling methods depends heavily on the expertise of the researchers. It is carried out by observation and researchers use it widely for quality to research, not for the quantity to research. Uh, my, um, <coughs> my mind is already set. I want to look for this character. So there is a subject to judgment. Now the samples I will select, they will not be random. So this is opposite to probability sampling. So what is the example of non-probability sampling? An example of convenience would be using student volunteers known as it's known to the researchers. Now, I know that, um, for example, in our college, we have what class representatives. Now, rather than going to each student, I use these as my sample. So researchers can send this survey to students belong to a particular school, college, or university and act as a sample. <coughs> For example, in an organization for studying the career goals of 500 employees, the sample should have been proportionally number of the females, which means that there should be 250 males and the females. Since this is unlikely, we select the groups or strata using quota sampling. We also use this type of sampling to conduct research involving a particular in illness in patients or a rare disease. For example, there is a rare disease. Now, my mind is said that I want to look for the rare disease. So I will select my uh, samples accordingly. There will be a bias that I have to look for the rare disease. Now let us make a comparison between the two types of sampling. That is non-probability sampling and the probability sampling. Non-probability sampling, as we have discussed that, sample selection is based on subject to judgment of the researcher. There is a bias. Sample is selected at random in case of probability sampling. In non-probability sampling, um, not every individual has a chance to participate. While as in case of probability sampling, every individual has the equal chance of being getting selected as a sample. Non-probability sampling, sampling, it is biased, while as probability sampling, it is non-biased. Non-probability sampling, it is useful when population has similar traits. And probability sampling, it is useful when population is diverse. Non-probability sampling, sample does not accurately represent the population, while as in case of probability sampling, it is used to create an accurate sample. So these are the points of distinction between non-probability and the probability sampling. Thank you.